Hello, and welcome to the Six Figure Developer Podcast, the podcast where we talk about new and exciting technologies, professional development, clean code, career advancement, and more. I'm John Calloway. And I'm Clayton Hunt. With us today is Jerome Lebon. Jerome is CTO of the open source Uno platform and a four times recipient of the Microsoft MVP award. Welcome, Jerome. Hello. Hi, John Clayton. So, Jerome, uh, how did you get started in the industry? Oh, uh, it's been a while. Uh, I started, I think, uh, developing on very small devices, hardware and things like that. Like actually, even before that, I was a demo demo maker. So it, it's, uh, you know, you know, fiddling with hardware devices and graphic cards and things like that. You know, with, like uh, 1998, so it, it dates back. So lots of graphics and 3D effects and things like that. Then uh, moved on to... Um, you know, hardware and then uh, hardware development, uh, you know, software on very specific hardware. And then .NET came on. Uh, I think it was in uh, 1999 something, better versions. And then you moved on and stayed on to .NET for quite a while. Uh, was, uh, was a teacher in France uh, for, uh, for a few years. Um, then moved over to, uh, to Canada, uh, where I, I started a, a few gigs in the middle, and then started another comp uh, started as another company in which I started Uno. Um, with, we were talking about uh, six years, ago, seven years ago, um, and uh, it was completely private at the time. And then um, you know, now you know, working uh, open source on that project, uh, and uh, you know it's uh, it's been quite the ride. Uh, it was that's for sure. But uh, very diverse and we're doing DevOps and uh, um, other types of you know, low-level development, Linux, Windows, uh, web dev now, now as well with WebAssembly. So lots of, of very diverse uh, things to work on. And is that your, uh, that's your main focus uh, these days is Uno or do you have yes. other stuff that you do? Well, you, they, uh, professionally, the Uno is the, uh, the main focus. Um, so Uno is, is all about getting uh, C-sharp and XAML running Pretty much everywhere. Uh, that's our that's our intent. Um, uh, we're to, when we're talking everywhere, we'll say we're saying uh, iOS, Android, Mac OS, uh, Linux, Tizen, WebAssembly for the browsers, uh, and probably you know, others if uh, if others come come um, to uh, uh, come to to. To you know, it's a rise up to a point where we have a uh, interest from uh, from users uh, on on GitHub, and it's all open source. I mean, it's a, it's a project that's free to use, uh, and uh, we're uh, we're basically you know taking any kind of contribution, like any any open source project that uh, that is available. So what what exactly is the you know platform? Is it just like? all of the underlying bits is it everything from the kitchen sink is it uh, what what is it why would i why would i choose to use uno so so uno is is uh you know probably a bit of history about uno would be uh, would be of interest to understand why uh, we 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 went that way um the uh, the parent company of uh, uno platform is uh, is called inventive it's a company that was you know founded about 11 years ago and uh the 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 uh, the the main uh, the main jobs of that company were to uh, do development on Civilite and WPF and uh, many other Windows specific platforms, so C Sharp all the way. Um, and then Microsoft approached us at some point to do some Windows Phone development, which we did for uh, for quite a while. So it was called Windows Phone Seven Series at the time. Uh, so <laughs> kind of the weird naming <laughs> of the of the Windows Phone. And then um, you know Windows Eight uh, Windows uh, Windows Eight came on and uh, and you know Windows 10, and we did all that, that kind of development. And during the time, what was interesting is that people were saying, "Oh, you're you're you know you you've made some good applications for us uh, on Windows, but we also have uh, you know plans for for applications on on iOS and Android." And uh, um, you know at the time we're talking about seven eight years ago, um, uh, you know Xamarin with Miguel de Casa were working on uh, MonoTouch and MonoDroid. Uh, which later became uh, you know, Xamarin, iOS, Android, and then the company uh, that later get bought you know, got bought for by Microsoft, and uh, we started developing on this and and make a uh, something that said well because we have so, so many developers inside uh, developers designers integrators that are that, that know about XAML and C Sharp that comes from Civilite and and uh, and let's say the UWP part of of XAML. 
um, uh, why don't we reuse all this and um, you know, make sure that we have uh, you know the same skill sets to use for all the platforms and that that's how uno became uh, it came to be um, and uh, and it you know it grew and grew and grew so we started with iOS and Android and then uh, then WebAssembly came on came along because uh, the, the uh, Domino team started working on WebAssembly, and you know that's a uh, uh, you know and then Linux and you know being open source that uh, that that happened during the past few years. But uh, it's all about reusing skills. You know, it's reuse your skills that you know. You know XAML, you know C sharp. Even you, even if you're coming from Civilite or or uh, WPF, even if there are things that will improve in the future. You know, if people have been trying to to do UWP development. Um, you can reuse those skills for UWP development and go over to all the other platforms uh, that uh, that that support that that support that Uno supports. So is uh, obviously it's it's made to uh, kind of pair with people who already know Mono and Xamarin. Are you having to do um, let's say uh, custom extra development? Uh, for Uno platform, or is it is it a completely separate thing from from Xamarin, or is it linked to Xamarin? I guess that's what I'm asking. <laughs> Got it. So um, the one thing to make sure of the the wording there is that there's Xamarin and there's Xamarin forms. So uh, Uno Uno on iOS, Android, and macOS uh, takes you know sits on top of Xamarin and not Xamarin forms. So there's no there's no forms in any way in that in that sense. So Xamarin forms is the, is is a technology that has its own XAML and uh, um, you know uh, and is made for uh, for uh, developing on iOS, Android, and macOS specifically. There are other targets that are available, but it's mainly the the three that are that are uh, supported. Uh, but we're on uh, on iOS and Android, specifically taking uh, sitting on top of uh, of Xamarin, so plain the plain bindings, which allows for developing on C sharp against uh, UIKit and uh, Xamarin uh, and, and um, the Android UI SDK and the rest of the of the platform. Uh, so that's what we're we're using there. Uh, for the other platforms, we're uh, taking uh, taking advantage of what uh, .NET is providing us. So .NET five recently. So um, on iOS, Android, uh, not iOS, Android, the uh, WebAssembly and um, and Linux, we're, to, we're using .NET five underneath to provide the support that's needed to to uh, to provide the platform. Now, with regards to what we what we uh, enable for applications to show, uh, there are multiple ways to work. And on iOS, Android, we're providing um, a way to display. So let's say, for instance, you have a, a text block to display. Um, that text block is going to take the form of a UI label when running on iOS. Uh, it's going to be a text view when running on Android. It's going to be a, uh, a paragraph uh, element when running on the web. And when running on Linux, it's going to be just pixels drawn using Skia. So that's multiple ways to draw depending on the platform. And uh, you know, it has its advantages and, and uh, you know, I wouldn't say drawbacks, but you know, you know, there, there's ways to draw in certain, uh, there's a, uh, a way to draw on certain platforms that makes it more efficient or uh, more appealing to a certain set of developers. And uh, drawing, by the, you know, drawing by the pixel, for instance, on, on Linux may, makes it more interesting for other sets of developers depending on the scenarios. Um, accessibility, for instance, is one very big point uh, that people have been, um, uh, I've been trying to 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 get working properly, and uh, when you draw everything by the pixel, accessibility is very very hard to get. So uh, so that's why we're ke keeping multiple t uh, t uh, uh, backend uh, ways of drawing things uh, you know, available in Uno. Okay, and that's so that that uh, that text control that's a single control that manages uh, how it renders depending on the platform that you've built for. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, there's a there's a way where basically when you you uh, when you create a, a a piece of XAML that contains a text block and image and things like that, uh, we're generating code using Roslyn from that XAML, and uh, that code is basically against the uh, the XAML the uh, you know the code XAML API. So there's a new text block, new image, and things like that. And underneath, at runtime, we're translating that text block to something that the platform and un the underlying platform tr uh, understands. So the text block is going to be rendered to uh, a UI label on, on iOS, or it's going to be drawn onto pixels, uh, pixel surface on on Skia, for instance. 
Okay. So I know like with, um, <clears throat> like if you were doing everything natively, right? So like you might uh, go into your WPF and uh, I, I, I guess blend isn't a thing anymore, but you know, you used to be able to like style, <laughs> uh, style your, your WPF controls uh, mm -hmm. using blend and gradients and change the font size yep. and all kinds of stuff. And then, you know, separately, uh, in iOS and Android, I'm sure they have their own customizations that you can do. And certainly the web does, like if you wanted to use, um, mm -hmm. uh, material design, for example, yes. uh, that not the, the library, but the, you know, the, the concepts, I guess, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, is it possible to do those sort of integrations and still just use the single Uno control or yes. is there, oh, fantastic. Yes. Yes. And yes. So, so the, the that's, a, that's a very good you know, most people are asking the question. So there's pretty much two kinds, well, let's say three. So there's three ways of, of thinking about the UI. The first one is um, I want to use the controls that the platform provides. So let's say if I'm on iOS, I want, when I, when I use a button, I'm going to use pretty much the styling approach that if you know WPF, you can, uh, you have lookless controls for which you have a style and then the template of that control. And then the content of that control is going to be something. It can be a video button. It can be gradient button, which is star shaped something. Uh, but if you want to do that, then you can't use the platform. So let's say if you're on iOS, you want to use the platforms button, then, uh, we have a set of default templates that provide for a button, you know, the platform specific way of drawing things. So uh, if you use that approach, then per control, you're gonna be having something like a button that displays like a native iOS button, native Android button, native uh, WebAssembly button, or so HTML button. And then if you're on Skia, that doesn't exist because it's just um, you know, a pixel based canvas. So there's no default uh, platform templates. It's going to be the XAML one, but you can choose and use uh, because it's UWP. We've imported all the all the the, uh, the platform templates. Uh, so that means that everything that Microsoft has been developing, whether it's the Windows 8 style or the new the new Fluent styles, those styles are those styles are also available to you as a developer per control. So if you want to have a native button and a uh, Fluent button and a material design button, because we also provide a library that provides that material button across platforms. Uh, you can choose all of that. And you can even go further than that. You can change the style at runtime per button. So if you have a, let's say, binding on a style on that button, you can switch between the two. It's useless, but you can do it. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So um, yeah, that, that's the kind of things that you know, depending on where you are and the, the kind of uh, the kind of designers or users that you have, um, especially let's say if you have a let's say an application that runs on iOS and uh, um, and, and you also have an application running on the web, you may want to have a um, because your users are are likely to use an iPhone and the web or an Android and the web, but less an iOS and an Android. It's, that's uh, not happening a lot that often, but you want to have a visual language or visual design that looks the same for those two platforms. Um, and in many respects, it can be difficult to get. So, uh, so that's what Uno provides. Uh, you know, either using uh, using pure XAML and you define everything what you want, um, but if you want also to have your you know, very close to the platform, you can also use the native uh, native UI. I can only only imagine the amount of complexity that's involved in in making something like that work. Just looking through the the, uh, the GitHub organization for Uno platform, it looks like there's some sample repos and things like that. But it yes. looks like there's a large number of divided repositories just to get all of these bits working in concert. Yeah, well, the the, uh, the Uno platform itself is just mainly the Uno repo. So uh, the Uno, uh, it's called just Uno platform slash Uno. So that one pretty much contains all the things that are needed for Uno to work. Um, there are some dependencies, um, and the biggest one being the uh, the Uno source generator. So it's basically something that we had to implement for ourselves. Um, you know, not waiting for the C sharp nine uh, compiler to do it. Uh, you know, we actually started do it, developing it in um, in the C sharp six time frame. So it's uh, it's basically the same source generators that have been added to C sharp nine, but we we had that. Um, during C sharp six, uh, so we were able to generate the same kind of code that was using Roslyn, um, and that's how we are doing all sorts of funky things like taking XAML and compile and generate C sharp that we were generating and optimizing on the fly. So that's the kind of things that that we can do with uh, with that. But 
for the rest, yes, it's pretty much all on the inside of the the Uno the Uno repository, and uh, that's what I'm doing during my uh, my uh, live coding sessions on Twitch. It's all about uh, you know taking an issue and uh, you know demystifying the the whole solution and uh, the whole repository so that people just can go and and uh, troubleshoot if they want to like uh, uh, you know they don't just don't get stuck on on a very large repo and <laughs> get lost and we're recording this in early to mid january uh, 2021 all of the the latest bits .net 5 and, and c sharp mm -hmm. 9 were released in november 20, 2020 mm -hmm. uh, did you get much uh, improvements out of, out of those bits being released did you get to any speed improvements did you get yes. new new apis new yes. <laughs> functionality many many um so interestingly we we and uh, so it's 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 a it's in two platforms uh, ios android mac os are not uh, benefiting from dotnet 5 at this point unfortunately um this is going to be for the dotnet 6 wave uh, with uh, with other types of uh, improvements that are going to be uh, you know in the, in that specific uh, you know time frame uh, but for dotnet 5 and webassembly and skia so uh, running on linux specifically uh, on webassembly we got pretty much in some cases uh, uh, you know uh, you know times 2 performance improvements in terms of runtime execution. So that's pretty good. Um, you, uh, tooling that's uh, easier to work with. Uh, the fact that uh, you know, there's uh, many APIs that have been added that, that allow us to make sure that everything is running smoothly. And uh, another thing that's on Linux that's very interesting for, for uh, to get running on .NET 5 is the fact that um, uh, ARM devices are, have been, are, are, you know, support is, has been improved. So, you know, performance improvement to run uh, running on the Raspberry Pi, and that's that's uh, that's one of the things that that got us to run is the uh, the, the Windows calculator that was uh, open sourced about uh, two years ago now, um, and uh, we ported that over to uh, to iOS and Android. So, if you want to have the Windows calculator, you go to Uno. Uh, Uno calculator on on iOS or Android, and you're gonna get the same calculator. Uh, but we took that same code that we ported over from Microsoft, and put that on Linux and on a on a Raspberry Pi. So that's that's pretty cool to see that uh, with all the .NET five updates that they've made, uh, that everything's running pretty pretty nicely there. I'm gonna want MS Paint next. <laughs> Yeah, well, that one's not C sharp, and it's not. Uh, that, that's a good one. You know, people have been asking what. What else could you do if Microsoft opens through something? And uh, you know, there there are quite a few things that could happen. Uh, so, but we don't know yet. <laughs> Nobody wants MS Paint. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you want GIMP. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I use GIMP for Windows and, and <laughs> GIMP for all over the place. So, um, and and before the show or before we started recording, we were talking about uh, some of the difficulties in the open source ecosystem. Yes. Have you, uh, with a project this size, do you have a lot of support in in the community? Do you have a lot of of folks chipping in and and contributing their own uh, blood, sweat, and tears? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. And that that's uh, so. The interesting thing is that you know when you say. You know, you're new, so that means your project is about a year and a half ago. So, but pretty much when we we open sourced it, we just dropped a huge amount of code, and people started looking at that and said, "Well, you're you're you know, a month old, and you have all this. You know, where where were you? You know, how could that be that your 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 project is that big?" And um, so it it gets difficult for for people to understand the the depth of that. So. Commitment to changing a platform is not something that's easy, um, and uh, and then there's also the fact that uh, you know in the Microsoft ecosystem people are expecting Microsoft to provide something, so that that leaves let's say le le less uh, air for other projects of bigger size to uh, to get people to to you know, to contribute and and trust. Uh, so we get sometimes people saying, "Well, you're not Microsoft, so I'm I, I can't I can't." I can't use your project. I mean, uh, I, I don't know if you're going to be staying here for you know for the next five years because my project is going to last for ten years. Um, but you know, people are, are changing slowly their minds, mostly because Microsoft has been open sourcing most of their stuff that they're working on right now, uh, and it, it serves us well because uh, I'm contributing to Mon to uh, actually Mono and now .NET for WebAssembly uh, to get you know the, the ball running and you know. You know, if you want something to get to, if you want something done, just you know, 
do it <laughs> pretty much. So that that's what we're 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 doing for for Uno. We're just not about just working for Uno. It's uh, it's all about you know, uh, going to the source of things when it doesn't work, or if you want something new, then just you know try doing it by yourself. And uh, the the way we're working with uh, we're, the way we're financing the project is basically the Red Hat model. So we're saying. To, uh, to people that come in, well, you're free to use the project, but if you want something fixed, then either do it yourself or uh, uh, then you can pay us to do it and basically allow us to prioritize your issues uh, you know, and move up the move up the stack. So that's pretty much the the way uh, the way we're working right now, and it's it's uh, it's picking up. So that's pretty good. That means that uh, you know, the developers are 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 taking in taking interest, and we've been here long enough for now that that uh, the name is out, and uh, we have to get to the next wave of each development cycle that that companies are getting uh, and, and and choosing and choosing Uno to get there. But uh, being open source is not is not an easy task. You, know, you have to deal with uh, with with many people with different set of skills, and we're learning a lot. Um, when when people are asking questions and you know uh, and coming into the project with different with different experiences and uh, we're 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 assuming things that may not be right so we have to adjust constantly the documentation to make sure that people are coming in depending on their background and, and they can understand what we're doing um, so that's uh, that's pretty interesting uh, on the documentation um, I, it's probably my least favorite thing to do. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but um just uh, curious is there is there an idiomatic way to do uno like to to develop using uno or um is that kind of still up there is it is it i guess is it is it opinionated or does the documentation have an opinion on how you should use it so um we're pretty much following what Microsoft is doing, so we're not deviating that much uh, and 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 you know choosing our own route. Uh, project other projects have done that, and then they're you know they're uh, I wouldn't say shot themselves in the foot in some ways, but you know it's uh, we're we're basically implementing the API that coming that is coming from Windows, uh, and uh, you know down to the extent where we use Roslyn to just take the whole API set that, that uh, WinUI and WinRT are providing and you know, sticking to that API. So if something's not available there, uh, we're not going to be implementing it. If you want to do it, you can do it because you can reach the underlying platform if you want to. But uh, in terms of adding explicit APIs uh, that, that Windows is not supporting, if we do that, then we get incompatible with Windows. So, so we generally don't do that. Um, so uh, to start with Uno, basically it's just about you know either uh, going to Visual Studio and adding the uh, uh, the the Uno platform add-ins add in So if you search in the add-ins for, for Visual Studio, or you can use the .NET new uh, .NET new templates. Uh, so you can uh, do that on on iOS, on uh, Mac OS, or on Linux. If you do .NET new Uno template, given that you've installed the templates uh, from our our getting started, uh, you can just basically go and and start with that. Okay, so so if I found guidelines for development uh, with WPF or Xamarin that were from Microsoft, um, I could apply those basic guidelines to UNO, but just use the, the UNO uh, controls and, and, and what comes with that library. Yeah, well, so in terms of development, you would do pretty much, if you, if you, if you start with the development with uh, the, the UWP guidelines, so developing on Windows, you can apply that directly with um, uh, with Uno, but you can also use all the development techniques that are coming from Xamarin, not Xamarin Forms, but Xamarin specifically for iOS, Android, and macOS. They're going to be the same. Um, any any new feature that comes in uh, with regards to the platform, like uh, they, instru they introduce something that's called uh, startup tracing for Android. I mean, because we're relying on uh, on Xamarin Android, that feature is available right away. I mean, there's nothing that Uno needs to do for that to work uh, completely. Uh, it's going to be the same thing when going over to .NET 6 um, and, and the new support that uh, the Xamarin team or the .NET folks now are going to be adding to, uh, to .NET 6. This is going to be available uh, right away. Okay. Awesome. I mean, that, that's good because like the, it's, you know, when you're picking up a new library and you don't know how to use it, it's difficult to, to figure out how to use it. But being able Definitely. to use anything that you've already learned along the way or the the wealth of information that's available for developing uh, 
uh, yeah, I, I'm missing. so not used to saying the the what universal Windows is you. <laughs> what is it? I'm, I'm stuck at WPF. I don't. <laughs> so, universal Windows platform. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. That's fine. And you know, they're they're learning about that. They're they're learning, and, and it's something that they're. Um, UWP in some sense is moving along to something that's with Project Reunion and all things like that, uh, where um, you know when UI and so the UI part of the of uh, the UI part of Windows is going to get a library that's a, so the WinUI three is going to be a separated so that um, it can run on desktop uh, using Win thirty two. So UWP, UWP in some sense is is going to be only the container model that that sandboxes the applications um it used to be encompassing too much uh it it, compa it, encompa it encompassed uh, uh winrt which is everything that's non ui like uh, geolocator file access things like that and win ui won in some sense uh for which it was xaml and uh and uh, everything that had a way to display something but now this those two parts are you know taken apart and you can use them as a uh, as a Win32, as a Win32 app, basically, uh, pre in a, pretty much the same way you would do a, a WPF app in some sense. Um, so that that's where we're going, and we're not UW, we're, we're UWP compliant in in the API sense of the term uh, for Uno, but we're not bound to the container model aside from the fact that the platform you you may be running on is containerized. So if you're running on iOS, you can do what iOS allows you to do. Uh, if you're running on WebAssembly, you can do what the browser lets you do, but that's pretty much, it's not Uno that's gonna be limiting in any way. Okay. So what's been your favorite part of the whole process? Are, are there any big wins that you had? Is it uh, implementing a specific feature or, or getting onto <laughs> a, sp a specific platform? Uh, well, getting WebAssembly running, uh, that's a big win. Um, we're taking a look at the you new, know, <laughs> The outlook of what WebAssembly is providing, being able to run anything anywhere, um, you know, and being able to interrupt with anything—that's that's the big win. You don't you don't limit yourself to one platform. You can go wherever you want to go, uh, given that the browser is letting you do what you want to do. Um, it's still it's in inf its infancy. There's many things that need to be ironed out, but the fact that that much code is able to run in the browser. I mean, it's mind blowing, uh, and uh, there's so many things that are coming up uh, with regards to to support in browsers, like threading, like uh, uh, being able to interrupt with other languages without any kind of uh, interrupt layer that you need to code by yourself. That's the kind of things that uh, that make it, you know, pretty amazing. And so you can drop, let's say, if you I was talking about the calculator before, but if you go to uh, calculator.platform.uno. You're gonna get that same calculator running in your browser, so it's the same code uh, with C++ as well that's been compiled over to WebAssembly. So that that's pretty amazing for uh, for teams that th that don't want to have to do anything with uh, uh, the the uh, the stores and the limitations of the stores and you know, risking your app to be moved away from the store because you you've sold anything that that shouldn't be sold or things like that. So that's. Um, that's that's something that, that that I consider a big win, and and we're done. We're not done, <laughs> not by a long shot. You've you've lost me. I'm I've got calculator dot platform up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was amazing. That was amazing. And, and you know we've added um, accessibility support, so voiceover uh, recently. That and it's translated into uh, sixty five languages as well. Uh, because it, the original one was translated with uh, as many languages, so that's the kind of things that that Uno allows to do. Um, so uh, you know, if you push that along with any kind of development that has been done for the past twenty years in .NET, I mean, you get the compiler running inside of the browser because because why not? So uh, and people are are getting you know very interesting scenarios running there in the browser just because of that. So it, it it sounds like there's there's uh, no lack of features already in Uno and no lack of features that you're working on adding to Uno. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> what's what's coming up? Is there anything that uh, .NET six is gonna uh, add that it will allow you to do anything uh, cool? Yeah, yeah. Um, the problem at this point with uh, Xamarin, iOS, Android, and uh, and macOS is the fact that we're and UWP for that matter uh, is that you have one 
one project per platform in Visual Studio. And that makes it, if you create a new project, a new project with Uno, you will see that you get a solution with, uh, I, don't, I, I don't have the count in mind, but I think it's eight or nine projects because of the fact that each individual platform has its own project structure. Um, and .NET 6 is going to enable to have all those platforms just be in one project uh, and have Visual Studio just select the platforms that you want to develop for and, uh, and not have all those duplicates things that you know, are needed somehow, but don't need to surface that much to the user. Um, so that's the kind of things that, uh, that are going to be uh, very interesting. Another one is uh, Catalyst, the fact that you can run a, uh, an iOS application on macOS. And uh, Frank Krueger has, uh, has done his magic again. Uh, <laughs> he took the uh, the Catalyst stuff and the iOS stuff that's coming from, uh, well, actually, the iOS runtime from Microsoft and just pushed in everything that makes Catalyst run. And uh, you can basically take a NuGet package and make it run on on uh, Mac OS without doing anything else than just linking that NuGet package. So, uh, and Uno works with it, so that's pretty that's pretty sweet. So I'm assuming that uh, Microsoft is going to pick that up, that space, that pace, and uh, and get um, uh, Catalyst running as well. So all the .NET 6 with uh, all the WebAssembly updates that are coming up this year, and uh, you know, we we uh, you know, and with RenewI 3 as well, we we're taking all those uh, those uh, investment that Microsoft are doing in WinUI, uh, in WinUI 2.5 and 3, we're porting them over to, uh, to Uno uh, so that we're adding con you know, many controls per month just because of that. So, uh, so that's, uh, that's, that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're, we, we have lots of work <laughs> to do for this year, that's for sure. It certainly seems like it. And it looks like you've got plenty of open issues on GitHub. Yes. You've got plenty of opportunities for folks to get involved in the community. Exactly. Uh, are, are there other resources that you might uh, mention on, on show that we can point people towards or just go to GitHub and, and pick up an issue and, and, and well, there's that, uh, there's sure. Yeah. There's that, you know, going to GitHub and, and pick up an issue could be that, you know, uh, or, you know, what, what people generally tend to do is that they have their own app, their own scenarios, and they say, well, I want to do this, but Uno doesn't provide it. Then I'm going to implement it. So uh, that's what happened with uh, with uh, many of the developers that came in. I want to have, for instance, access to uh, through WebAssembly to the support for getting access to the file system because Chrome is supporting it now. So that's what what uh, what uh, developers did, and uh, that's pretty much what what happens most of the time. But if you want to, uh, you get acquainted with uh, with Uno, you can also go to our YouTube channel. I'm, I'm uh, so doing live coding the Uno platform, um, and if. You know, people are you know, want to ask questions. There's the Discord um, uh, that's uh, that's available on the the um, uh, it's the UWP Discord. Uh, so we have the link on uh, on our website. Uh, but we have so Stack Overflow. We're present on Stack Overflow and Twitter, and uh, so uh, yeah, lots of opportunities to uh, to drill into. But that, most of the time, yeah, it's it's just do your app, and if you find something that doesn't work for you, try it. <laughs> right. Um, so as, as we wrap up, uh, what has been helpful in your career that you might share with those just getting started or those looking to level up their own careers? Oh, that's a, that's a pretty good question. Um, I'd say, you know, open up to other platforms, uh, other developers as well. You know, it's pretty, pretty important to not, not just get stuck to one environment, uh, you know, even if we're, you know, Uno is, is all about getting access to other platforms and people are not just going to be developing for just one window, Windows or, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're coming to other, you know, the market moves quite a bit. So uh, next thing you know, you know, iOS and Android may just get, you know, overruled by something else that, uh, and, and it, you, you have to know about all the other platforms. And that's what I did. I, 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 you know, the the Linux uh, Linux investment that I made, you know, 15 years ago, are serving me now. Uh, so, you know, it's the kind of things that, um, you know, uh, try new things. You know, uh, get to new get to new. Uh, you know, go to to the open source the open source project of your choice uh, that you're depending on because you have to. You know, I, I work with uh, out of necessity for some projects. You know, I want to do something, then I drill into that project and try to understand what happens there. Um, and you know, when I started, open source wasn't there. You know, 20 years ago, or it was not that much. Uh, so I, you know, many would think we're closed source, and you have to guess around. Uh, but now it's all open source. So just 
just go and drill into things uh, and, and get to uh, you uh, uh, understand what's happening under the hood. That's, uh, that's one of the good things that, that can happen right now. Um, and it's, it's, it's mind, op mind opening if, in, in many ways. Yeah, it certainly seems like the um, the rate of new is increasing as time goes on. Yes, that or, or I'm just getting dumber and slowing down. But um... no, 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 <laughs> no. There's way too much stuff to track. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, you know, it's it, it's it, it, that's for sure. It's getting difficult to to track everything that's been happening. Um, I mean, you know, the the .dot net ecosystem is moving. You know. A, a lot less faster than the other ecosystems, you know, especially with regards to uh, JavaScript and others, where there are many things that are happening uh, a few times a month. But that's why we're we're trying to you know, narrow down a little bit the field because of uh, the fact that we're supporting one API set for for all those platforms. Um, but you know, the other platforms are still there, so we're not hiding them. So you have to learn about those all those different things that are provided there by those platforms. So uh, because the users you know, are still there and they want to use their devices fully. So, uh, but no, no, no one's getting dumber or anything. It's just, you know, it's uh, uh, imposter syndrome in many ways. <laughs> it's just coming up every time. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, difficult to go around. All right. Uh, where can our listeners go to follow you and keep up with what you're working on? Uh, so definitely, uh, you can follow me on GitHub. Uh, I, you know, so GitHub, uh, say that's Jérôme Laban on GitHub. Uh, you have Twitter, uh, J L A B A N. Uh, I'm also on Twitch, uh, Jérôme Laban, same thing. Uh, and then uh, Discord, I'm uh, present all the time. So you know, you can just reach me there uh, and ask questions. So I'll be more than happy to uh, to answer. All right. And chat, just hang out for a few minutes. We'll uh, wrap up the show here and stop our recordings locally. And then we will re-enable the drop game and continue the conversation for a few more minutes. Uh, so with that, well, thank you, Jerome. We really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you. That was Jerome Laban. Jerome is CTO of the Open Source Uno platform and a four-time recipient of the Microsoft MVP Award. If you like this episode, please like, rate, and review on iTunes. Find show notes, blog posts, and more at sixfiguredev.com. And catch us live each week on Twitch, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Six Figure Dev. This has been another episode of the Six Figure Developer Podcast, helping others reach their potential. I am John Calloway. And I'm Clayton Hunt. Fade down. Everything's quiet. Okay. Stopping that recording. Stopping that recording, because John wants me to. Although I'd I'd like to send John like a five gig video recording of of Zoom, but Wouldn't be he, the first he doesn't time. he doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so Clayton records or gets the gets the Zencaster in the Zoom, and then uploads it through Dropbox, and then I download it locally on my machine, and nice. then I take that raw and the edited, and then back it up to my free NAS <laughs> server, and then nightly that folder is backed up to Azure. <laughs> so like we've got so many copies of this stuff. Great. Well, that's good. That's good. It's that's uh yeah, you don't want to lose all this, you know, it's uh, it's important. It's still uploading the that data, but it's uh, it's supposed to be finishing pretty soon. Yeah, you're almost done. John's at 60%. Yeah, how how is the the internet? All done. Oh, it's pretty good. I got uh 100 megabits and uh you know down and uh 30 megabits up so that's pretty good that's good enough for me <laughs> at least <laughs> yeah, i keep I increasing we're... it but my streaming video services still freeze up and tell me i don't have enough bandwidth i don't know what the deal is oh could could be uh could be could be local it may sometimes it's just uh the router stuff that you have in between that may have issues yeah you've got the like the cable modem router yeah from the company, yeah. Right? I, yeah i guess there was I a drop all this <laughs> there was a thing that that passed recently or or our contractor i don't, I don't know what the deal is my wife told mm -hmm. me that we could replace it now so i might i might have to ask you what your your beast of a router is Al although it that doesn't seem to have helped you very much <laughs> well that's just because i have lousy internet but uh, like inside the house it's fast yeah well i i'm uh on, on my local network i i uh pretty much the modem is uh, passed through to uh, cable 
Mm. So it's uh, it doesn't it really doesn't do anything. You get to, and the rest is a PF sense. So I'm just having that in front uh, of the rest, and it's it's going pretty fast. It's uh, doing well. Yeah, I've got the uh, Ubiquity Dream Machine, mm. the, the cylinder one. Yeah, yeah, that works pretty well as well. So, how many platforms do you actually have to program in for Uno? Like, is there is there code for every one of those platforms, or are you leaning like real heavy on Xamarin for a lot of it? Um, well, if it's Uno itself, um, most of the time, depending on the type of control, it can be, um, um, you know, let's say when when we import import control from UI, most of the time we don't have to do anything per platform. So let's say we imported, for instance. Um, uh, the control that's called the info bar. So it's a small control that just pops up something with uh, some text in it. And we just basically did, you know, import it once and then there's nothing specific to the platform. But there are some other controls that we, when we're developing inside of Uno that uh, need to have uh, you know, specific implementation because uh, maybe sometimes the platform does not support it or because we don't have the support for a specific feature that UWP or WinUI is providing. So that's the kind of things that we, we tend to drop some layers to get to the APIs that we need. Um, but where, when you're developing an application that uses Uno, most of the time you just need to do it once. Uh, you, don't, you don't need to go down to the, to the weeds and, and go to the platforms. Now, depending on what you use, let's say you want to do... Uh, let's say you want to do in-app purchases that is something that is very specific per platform hmm. so we don't have a we don't we have not implemented the uh, in-app purchases apis that come from win from uh, winrt uh, to get to get those cross plat because um, those are pretty pretty platform specific in many in many respects so that's where you need to do something specific for the platform uh, and 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 you know, code against the native apis um, but that, that's pretty much that's pretty much where it goes. And of course, if you want to you know, show something that's that's precisely for the, the platform and you want to do, let's say, native button or native combo box or, mm -hmm. or whatnot. So, yeah, uh, I yeah. appreciate the uh, the Visual Studio templates as well because I am a Visual Studio user through and through. I'm I'm not good at CLIs. Uh oh. There you go. No, no, no I, I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> Sorry. Um, He's like, yeah, I'm out. So, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I came across a, a Channel 9 video where they were showing off the uh, the template. So I'll yeah. that in chat. So that was, that was I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, it was, um, it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun to, to, to get that rolling. Um, you know, and we're, we're not, we're not finished. I mean, we're looking at having something like uh, visual studio code support more advanced in many respects. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're not because you know, we have to have uh, new, uh, more integration, especially with regards to XAML. Uh, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not done. So we're, we're relying on, on visual studio for better or worse uh, for now. Uh, and, Many of the updates that are, that that uh, you know many of the bugs that are people are reporting to us are coming actually coming from Visual Studio itself. Uh, so we're we're getting to uh, um, we're trying to get those fixed and you know, uh, get get uh, provide all the details that we can to the Microsoft teams that are responsible for for some of the things that uh, that are not working. It's improving. Uh, we're waiting for Visual Studio, Visual Studio 69 uh, Preview 3. Um, very eagerly, <laughs> let's say. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that. Yeah, the, the Visual Studio updates are so frequent these days. I'm just like every time yeah. I look at Visual Studio, it's like you have an update waiting. Yeah. Yeah, but well, it's been like forever since we had a full version. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's, you know, 2019 is is you know so three years ago. Right. Five, six years I, ago. I don't yesterday know. Yesterday felt like three years. <laughs> But the the interesting part there is, you know, I, I'm I'm working. I have a three Visual Studio instances uh, installed on my machine, and uh, because if, if if I were to only have one or two, you know, let's say one preview, one stable, it would be a problem because you know stables tend, you know, previews tend to break, and that that that's a good thing in in, in many in many many ways. But the problem is that it's very very hard to go back one version. Uh, down to a point where you know if you don't know what you're doing you can't do it you know there's no public way 
of doing of doing so. So what I'm doing is I have two versions of Visual Studio installed of the preview. I'm using a feature that uh, allows you to name a, a version of Visual Studio. And so what I'm doing is I'm doing a ping pong of updates from one version to the other. So um, I have a let's say I have a preview two a preview one installed and preview three comes up. Um, then I. I just I update my preview. You know, let's say I preview one and preview two install, and preview three comes out. And uh, if preview one was fine, I'm uh, I'm updating my preview two. And if preview two was good, I pre update my preview preview one. So I can keep keep uh, keep developing without being blocked. Uh, and uh, you know, if, if one version doesn't work, then just let uh, just let it be in the in in test if there are other things that may break. <laughs> right. So one thing that we didn't that we didn't talk about, or or I don't remember us talking about it, which has been known to happen. I do forget things quick. Um, but uh, there is a uh, playground that you can you can do Uno in the yes. browser live without downloading anything. So exactly that is awesome for someone who just wants to like, what is this thing? Exactly. So. Yeah, the playground is all about just drop your XAML and uh, put your data context. Uh, and uh, you have a tab that's called the data. And then you can data bind stuff uh, from the view down to the, uh, the, the, the JSON that's provided and the code behind. So that's, uh, that's how you can work with those two. So you can pretty much test anything that we, we are providing already uh, and you know, exercise your XAML skills. And you can even share the, the XAML and data con and, um, and, and JSON that, that you input it and, uh, and decide at that time and just have that to, uh, to someone else so that they can test out. And, and we have, we're getting reports, uh, you're getting bug reports that way now. Nice. Uh, with people just creating that. So we're considering uh, doing this, the same thing with, uh, with C Sharp integrated. Uh, so you can, you could probably, you know, develop your C Sharp engine, just compile everything in the browser and, uh, and, and, and run everything uh, through that. And we're not there yet, but it's, uh, it's pretty close. I do see one problem though. Um, on the, uh, what is it on the snippets tab? There's mm -hmm. no calculator. Nah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, you gotta have that open in a different window. Yeah. Yeah. Just another window, <laughs> but yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, the calculator is still, you know, it, it still takes that, that, that's one problem of WebAssembly. You still have to compile everything down to, uh, to an application. So for now, uh, let's say for the, for instance, a calculator is about, uh, it's 40 megabytes in compressed. So that's something that needs to be improving uh, on the on the Microsoft side. So we're working with them to to give them everything that they, the uh, the the experience that we have with making larger applications using uh, using .NET in the browser. Uh, so that there are scenarios, specific scenarios that uh, that they can improve on. Uh, so to get there. So if you if we were to in integrate the calculator inside the playground, it would make it quite big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, but the, the actual calculator, they're, they're you know, a simpler calculator that, that you can do in a simple class that that, that would do, but uh, that one is pretty large. Yeah, well, with all the, you know, the scientific and programmer functions yes, and all this stuff. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That is a cool demo, though, being able to see the Windows calculator in the, chilling in the browser. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite fun. It's quite fun. Um, it, it's a... You can install it as a PWA if you want. So if, when you open it, there's a plus button that happens at the top. Um, and uh, so you can pretty, basically install that and, uh, and run it as a uh, kind of a you know, PWA. So it's, it looks like an app that you installed on your, on your machine, but it's really a, a website. It's been so long. I don't know what the M plus, the M minus, the MS. The... That's, that's memory. The C E, the C and the clear clear <laughs> got nothing, clear man. everything. I got now. Go to the, the programmer uh, calculator. It'll feel like home. No. Exactly. No. Interestingly, because the, the calculator is the same as the Windows one, the fact that you know we ported everything as is. So that a standard calculator is pretty much the same that you would buy as a cheap calculator. So there's no there's no operator precedence. So people are opening issues and saying, well, if I do do that plus and then multiply afterwards and it does funky stuff but it's on purpose <laughs> so we can't we can't change anything so you have to go to the scientific mode and then you're going to get you're going to get your the 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 right way of uh, <laughs> of calculating but with the precedence faithfully co faithfully copied from original <laughs> exactly 
<laughs> exactly. It, it's pretty old code base. If you, you know, parts of that that um, that app are as old as 1993, I think. Wow. Uh, if I remember, remember correctly, so we we didn't port everything over to C sharp. You know, parts of it is is keeping uh, is uh, staying in C plus um, plus. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's quite old. <laughs> So it's like this, maybe the Windows calculator does this too. I mean, it, it very well could. I just don't see it. But when I switch between like standard and scientific, for example, mm -hmm. there's like it, the, the actual calculation pad, is what I'm going to call it, starts off a little small and then grows. Is that? Yeah. They, they removed it, actually, I think. Uh, let, me, let me check again. I think they removed it. But it, it, was, it was in there? Yeah, oh, no, it no, it, there it does it. It does it. No, it's a it's little still, bit... It, it, so it depends if you're if you're uh, using RDP or anything like that. Um, it it, dep it depends on uh, on your your um, machine's animation settings. So it's supposed to just come in and and, and zoom in. If you install the same application, uh, the Uno calculator on on your uh, um, on your iOS and Android devices, you're going to get the the same animations. Um, interestingly, on on the iOS side. Um, uh, the because the calculator has been developed to to run on phones and large devices and things like that it's it's responsive and we've enabled the the ability for the for the uno calculator to be snapped on the side on uh on ipads so you can basically put your 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 calculator on the side and you know for some reason i uh ios no well, it's not ios it's ipad os now doesn't have uh a calculator installed by default so <laughs> so you have to get one and the only calculator fills that gap pretty well well they're not for actually doing things they're just <laughs> well that's what that's not what they say they're saying <laughs> yeah. <wrong. laughs> no, the, the pro is for doing things that's why it comes with a pen pencil yeah. pencil yeah I yeah <laughs> see that's why i got my mother a surface go and a pencil Right. <laughs> you made a pen? Pen. I don't know. Whatever it was. The Surface comes with a pen with an eraser. Okay. The iPad comes with a pencil with no eraser. Oh, you can't do? I didn't, I didn't think I, They think may have would. added it, but like when it first came out, it didn't have an eraser. Uh, Whereas like the, so that you yeah. had the Surface pen that had an yeah. eraser and the Apple pencil with no eraser. It just, nothing made any sense. <laughs> what oh. a world we live in. Definitely. <laughs> I'm looking at the the Uno gallery, the code samples, and the showcases. What what's your favorite one out here? I mean, we're not recording anymore, so it's it's perfectly safe. <laughs> it can only be kept on Twitch for 14 days, uh, it's just, and then, yeah. then we're gonna back it up to YouTube. It's fine. <laughs> um, well, you know, the calculator is, is something that we we use as a as a baseline for many things. Um, you know, for supported features, kind of an application that's that's large enough. Um, yeah, because it, it gives us the uh, the ability to test most of the things that have been implemented in, in a large complex application, performance wise and, and, and anything else. Um, so there there's that one. Uh, there's a channel line application that's that's educative. Uh, people have been have been looking at that one um, to uh, to understand you know kind of more you know larger application but not not too much. Um, there's uh, the the Uno gallery as well that shows off the uh, Everything goes with uh, material design guidelines and uh, fluent guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Uh, there's community toolkit support. So that one is uh, people have been have been asking for support for that one for quite a while. So we have a we've ported over the the data grid control that's in the uh, the WCT the Windows Community Toolkit. Um, the data grid is is something that many um, business users and a line of business app. I've been I've been uh, asking for, and that that control is starting to be uh, pretty efficient and displaying things. Um, what else? Skia Skia is interesting. Uh, Skia Sharp. So it's a demo that uh, that shows what Skia Sharp is able to do on the on the browser. Um, you know, it's basically you can um, you can get uh, you know. All the applications that have been using uh, using Skia uh, to render things on iOS, Android, and uh, and Windows now can do the same on uh, on the web. And we have we have uh, customers that are using it 
uh, in pretty interesting ways. You know, mm -hmm. uh, having a very small canvas to draw many things on the on the screen, uh, just because of that. So it's the it's the actual uh, Skia engine running inside of WebAssembly. So if you think about it, uh, Chrome is using Skia to draw itself, and then we're using Skia, the full Skia engine, to render thing inside of Skia. <laughs> so that's that's pretty it's pretty interesting. Um, and the the one that I think is is actually more mind blowing for me is you know and you know, it, it, it it's a tech soup but um, it's um, if you go to uh, to the the uh, the GitHub there's um, in Uno platform there's one that's called uh, SQLite and uh, Entity Framework so on the main page if you search for uh, SQLite. There's a, there's an app that's called SQLite plus Entity Framework Core. That's and, one of Frank's, right? Uh, no, not that one. So, oh, okay. um, so uh, Frank's been doing the um, the SQLite uh, mapping to uh, to to allow for developers to use just a plain simple uh, C sharp API. But there's another one that's uh, actually that's actually underneath the the API that's provided by. Um, that's provided by uh, Eric Sink. And that API is the one that's used by, by uh, Entity Framework. And that demo is about getting C Sharp compiled inside of the browser. And that co code is compiled and uses SQLite and uses Entity Framework to manipulate a SQLite database, everything local inside of one page. And what's mind blowing for me is, you know, a compiler is pretty complex thing of a piece of technology and it runs in the browser <laughs> untouched so so that's quite amazing uh, and uh, you know and then afterwards that code is using you know it generated memory and it, it's it's using a database that's inside of the browser itself so you know it, it it goes it goes a long way in showing you know, complex pieces of 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 of, uh, of code can run in the browser using .NET, um, and not just your your simple library of manipulating things. It's just you know, complex stuff, very complex stuff. Is that SQLite EF Core dash Wasm dot platform? Dot, yes, you know? that's that one. So when you click the button, you can just you know, you can pretty much if you have a, a piece of code, you, you can just drop it inside that. Uh, that that code area and just get it running you know inside the inside of the browser hmm. just a little crazy <laughs> just a little <laughs> <laughs> that appeals to developers for sure um, it's something that you know you know, marketing wise is not super sexy <laughs> but you know if you're if you're looking at that with um, you know uh, from a developer standpoint knowing what all of this does it's mind blowing mm. i i just love that dot net is really the first platform uh programming platform to break through into web assembly you know i mean well, like they you know idea. they they did the m scriptum and and they had a few really cool demos like the unreal engine and whatnot but you know that that never like went anywhere that your average developer would do anything with, but but with Uno and this and Blazor, yes, uh, none of the other mainstream uh, platforms are anywhere close, from what I've seen. Well, well, the the, the thing is that, and that's pretty much the, the because of the way the platform is is providing the uh, what's it, it, the the original way of of uh, of marketing WebAssembly was pretty much about make your JavaScript better. Hmm. That's pretty much how it was marketed. So because it's the web, that means that people outside of the web are saying, well, that's for the web. So I'm not doing any web. So why should I care? Um, and people in the web are saying, well, I have JavaScript. So why should I care about WebAssembly and running into a, running anything else that comes from another language? I have everything that I need. You're pretty close. Um, except that it's not true. <laughs> um, when you're in JavaScript world, if you want to use FFmpeg or any library that's been developed in C for a while, you know, translating that to JavaScript is not an easy feat. Um, and if you're, you know, 
in the native world, well, translating, translating anything to JavaScript to get your application running there, you don't want to. And then you're stuck into using, uh, you, even if they're awesome in, in their own way, uh, you, uh, things like Vue or React or others, you, it, you, it may not appeal to everyone. And you're, that means that WebAssembly got, you know, is pretty much stuck in the in the in the mind share of, of current developers saying, well, I'm, if I'm on the web, I'm just going to do very small libraries that are performant to enhance my WebAssembly application. So, you know, it stays in the realm of you know fancy demos or crypto mining. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Just drop this WebAssembly on your on your website, and exactly. everybody that visits your website will crypto mine for you. Yeah, and and that that, that got the wrong you no know, wrong press you know uh, press coverage because of that, and that's why we're, we're we're pushing in the direction of making larger application, even if in some cases it's it's slower than it should be um because of reasons you know uh, technical reasons that are there uh, but that we know are going to get fixed in 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 many ways in in the coming month or years so that that's why we're we're pushing and get everything running so so in, in many sense you you you're right you know, you know with blazer and .net that's what pushes webassembly up front uh for the .net ecosystem, .net ecosystem. Uh, but it's it's not going as far for now uh, with with the other with the other platforms, lots of Rust. Yeah, there Rust seems to be the closest one. Yeah. But like I, like I I knew that they had they had been working on that. Um, and when I first looked at it, it was nowhere near uh, what Blazor was at the time. No. Uh, and no. now I'm I'm on there. I'm on like well, I went to the Rust website and they had a WebAssembly thing. <laughs> And you click on like, oh, I want to learn more about Rust and WebAssembly, and it was just four paragraphs of why it would be mm -hmm. cool, but not, you know, not any any actual yeah, code exactly, examples. Exactly. Yeah. So now I'm at a tutorial site looking at how to create a web app with Rust, and I'm hoping to get to the payoff. So they just somewhere need somebody to help out with documentation and code samples. <laughs> yeah, well, and and you know, Rust is a pretty cool language. Um, I, I like that it's it's you know super low level like C plus plus or C, but you have packages like Node or or yep. or dot net or, or Ruby or whatever, um, but it's still fairly niche as far as as languages go. Um, it's a uh, it's it's moving a lot with uh, systems programming, uh, and and very low level libraries. You know, uh, um, Parts of Firefox have been converted over to to that because of memory safety in many in many respects. So that's where it's getting its traction. Um, and for WebAssembly, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just um, we're still talking about you know pieces of code that's made to go faster that are put it over to to WebAssembly and and you know enhance JavaScript applications. So we're not talking about larger applications. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's going to move. It's going to move. I'm pretty pretty confident about that. Yeah, I'm I'm actually waiting for um, brand new platforms to show up that were designed with WebAssembly in mind. You know, right. like like here's a brand new programming language that compiles to WebAssembly mm -hmm. uh, that does all these things that we really want for the web that that JavaScript wasn't helping us out with. Mm -hmm. um, I love that C Sharp has has ported over to WebAssembly, but I'm waiting for that explosion. Like I'm I'm uh, a couple of years ago, I predicted, you know, this explosion of new languages and new platforms built using WebAssembly as their mm -hmm. main outlet. Um, still waiting for that. It's it's going to happen. Like you give developers a new toy and they're going to do weird stuff with it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's 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 all about trying it out and 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 see what um, what kind of scenarios fit for your business. It's that's what it is. Uh, and uh, you know, it it goes along with. You know, you have your application, and it's like when contributing to Uno. When when you're when you're asking for for how to contribute to Uno, it's just try it, and if you see a gap, you know, try it for yourself. Yeah, try the it's crazy a, thing that you need true. that no one yeah. else needs, and then yeah. and then when it doesn't no, it, work, it, exactly, exactly, and so uh, yeah, yeah. Frequent frequent word says hashtag developers hashtag weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Now I'm caught up looking for.
for example. I just want a single rust, rust <laughs> web assembly example. Rust assembly example. I yeah. found some code, but they they had like here's pictures of it working. And like why not just why not just link to a site where the thing is running? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I think that that's where it, it seems that a lot of the the newer projects, and I say newer, completely being relative, uh, are are standing apart in that they understand that documentation and and easy to read code samples and things like that are, are a good place to get started uh are, are almost a requirement to, to get some kind of community adoption and then get some excitement around that mm-hmm. and i really appreciate that because it makes it so much better <laughs> Because man, when you don't, when you're trying to pick something up, you don't even know where to start, and there's Definitely. and their documentation isn't up to snuff because they're probably busy working on functionality. Yeah, of course, which I understand, of course. but uh, but it's so so very much appreciated. I mean, that, but that so I don't know how I feel about it. Yes, I like that it makes it easier to learn stuff and pick stuff up, but at the same time, like the thing that drew me to programming when I was young was was that normal people couldn't do it <laughs> like it wasn't it was it was a certain level of inaccessibility you know like i bought this book i paid a hundred dollars for this book and none of the code samples work and i had to figure out how to get them all to work and that made me feel special which you know like you you'd like yes i did it i got that code sample to work that wasn't working in the book hashtag clayton is not normal got it <laughs> <laughs> But like, you know, like now it's, it's, it's almost to the point where people are choosing, uh, choosing libraries or choosing, um, uh, languages or platforms or, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, because it looks pretty. Like I'm going to shop at this website because they have a nicer UI yeah. than that website. And it's the same thing for like your programming. Like, well, this one has really excellent documentation and that one's documentation is terrible. <laughs> I'm going to go with the one with nice documentation, even <laughs> I, though the yeah, other one is commodity. actually better. It's commodity. Yeah. I, I appreciate the, the good documentation. I appreciate the fit and finish of a, a well-polished website. L- looking at like rockauto.com, the car parts superstore online thing that hasn't changed since 1991. <laughs> it's got awful ugly, but I bet they're rolling in the dough because they haven't had to touch it in 30 years. Oh, they've still got people employed, like doing background maintenance and stuff. But I don't know. I, I I guess I don't like that the UI is is becoming so important because I'm so bad at it. Ah <laughs> uh, well, I'm not a designer, so anything yeah, I, I make is going to look I'm terrible. I'm not either. I'm not either. That's why I have a. <laughs> there's a team at a Uno <laughs> that does that kind of things. <laughs> and here are all the code samples on how to use Material Design and Fluent Design. So it's great. Material makes my head hurt. Well, that's what you just use Fluent then. Yeah. Fluent works. <laughs> so well, you I say Fluent, we're... I think like blah, blah, dot, blah, blah, dot, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. It's the Microsoft-y. Oh, that's the... Uh, yeah, my... It used to be the... Um, it used to have Metro? a different name. The No, not... not... <laughs> is it... Is it Did Metro? Did it have a different name? Um, no, met, well, Metro was the boxes. Metro was the boxes, yes. Fluent is, is, is it, it's not the new version of the um, fabric, is it? Uh, it, it? Yeah, it's close. Yeah, it's close. It's, uh, Fluent is, uh, you know, uh, there's visual design, but there's also interactions and, um, you know, kind of, a, yeah, a visual, a visual interaction in the UX, so it kind of encompasses many things. Uh, but the, as a developer, most of the time, it's all about just use your, Use the controls that I've been providing and use a styling gadget. So it's a uh, uh, um, use the, use the controls that are, that are uh, fit to use uh, fit to provide the fluent design gu- design guidelines. So uh, most of the time you don't have to invent anything. Uh, now, if you have a if you have a larger application, then you may want to look at how the design guidelines uh, may help you to have a better application. Um, and if you're inventing new control, then you know you may want to read up a bit more. But uh, um, okay, so yeah, so they've got they've got guidelines, but they also have yeah. here is a CSS library to use. Yes. So that I'm fine with. Material material mm-hmm. design is like here is some mystical information 
uh, that, you know, like you should really think about your website and or your Android app in this way. And these things should float above those things. It's all hand wavy and nothing concrete. I mean, mm. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure if you read the whole thing and you understood what in the world it was talking about, that it would feel pretty concrete. But, you know, there's no... Like I, <laughs> yeah, like... I understand. I understand what you mean, and that that's why that's why for Uno we we're providing that library that that says you know you can use it that way. But you still have to, you still have to um, understand the guidelines. That, that's why you know UX designers and 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 designers are you know, graphical designers. No graphic designers know about that. You know, they know how to to integrate all of this properly and and make your application do properly. So you know, as a developer, it's it's a bit more difficult to grasp. That's for sure, and and we appreciate them for it. Yeah, yeah. no That's anybody sure. anybody that wants to do the design for me, I'm totally happy. <laughs> there you go. Well, we're we're pretty far past the hour. Um, appreciate you hanging out with us and and coming on the podcast. We are My pleasure. Looking- uh, we we kind of ran out of our backlog uh, over the holidays, so we are one week away from releasing. Unless you've got something specific you'd like us to coordinate the release with, uh, not at this point. But okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Then we'll look at yep. cleaning up the audio, and we'll release that uh, this coming Monday or a week from today. Uh, with Excellent. that, uh, thanks again. Really do appreciate you coming on the show. With that, we'll say good night, chat. Good night, everyone. There, uh, do join us. Um, Clayton and I run the stpete.net meetup. We will be back on tomorrow night on the stpete.net meetup channel, uh, hosting a um, Blazor authentication and authorization workshop or presentation. Uh, So hope to see everyone there. And then on Wednesday, we may or may not be here for a live coding at 8 p.m. Eastern, and we'll (laughs) chat about that offline. So, uh, And then back again on the following Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Hope to have you there. Uh, see you there. Uh, we will do the Twitch thing and we will raid our friend over at Mastermindio something. So thanks everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. And I'll wait till we're raided. Your audio is still going up. <laughs> Your audio is still going up.